Hey guys, welcome to another video all about the new boat I just bought. Now, I'm no boat reviewer and I've never done one of these videos, but I have owned and run small boats around our coasts for over a decade, and so hopefully you'll enjoy this video. And maybe it might even influence or help you if you're in a position to buy a boat of your own. It may be helpful for me to say that I tow my Weimar with a Mark 1 Land Rover Freelander, which although it is a 4x4 is not a particularly large tow vehicle, and it makes up a nice rig with this boat. If you were launching on proper slipways, you could get away with the lesser tow vehicle, however a boat of this size being launched on a pebble beach where I often launch may warrant a tow vehicle of this nature. So before we talk about the boat on the water, let's look at launching. The Weimar 465 on a roller coaster trailer is extremely easy to launch and as you can see is a one man job. On a proper slip where you can even launch these boats without dipping the hubs of your trailer in the salt water which is helpful, however on this beach I've no option but to back in a little more. The ease with which this boat launches is a huge luxury and I don't even have to get the car wet at all. and welcome to my little tour of the Weimar 465. The Weimar 465 is a simulated clinker sided, fast planing 15 foot boat. It is rated for engines between 15 to 25 horsepower, which I'll go a little bit more into later on in the vid. These boats are an extremely versatile hull and have good reviews regarding both their sea keeping qualities and their at speed performance. I've been looking for one for a while to operate both as a sea fishing boat and a freshwater predator fishing boat that I can tow all around the UK. Well, first things first, let's take a look at the boat. Up at the bow, we've got a dry locker. That isn't a flotation chamber, it's hollow, that holds my two anchors. Then I've got a flotation chamber here and one under the console here. Now, I've then got a seat which is not a flotation chamber. I've got dry boxes under there and then at the stern we've got this combined dry locker in the center with two flotation chambers either side there are sort of two dividers in there that separate your two flotation chambers from your central dry locker splash well at the back and the engine there we go these rod rests may go I'm just trialing them out at the minute I'm not sure how they're uh, gonna fare and what I do like is these little dry boxes that are dotted around everywhere I've got one under there one here, just for putting your phone, your electrics, all that stuff in. Handy. Now something different in this boat that I've never experienced before is I am on steering controls. You can see I've got a steering wheel and a throttle lever. Now all my previous boats I've controlled at the tiller, um, on the outboard's tiller arm. So this is all new for me. Um, I quite like the position of the wheel and stuff in terms of maneuverability. What I don't like is that because it's not central, when you're stood or sat at the wheel, the boat is listing to starboard. But it's a small price to pay. So in terms of the performance of this boat, we've tested it with myself and a friend on, so two people on the Menai Straits, and we clocked on the Navionics app a top speed of 21 or 22 knots. Um, now that will have been going off that's our speed with respect to the land, because that's an app. Um, so you can't take a really a true reading off that in case there was a bit of current pushing us either way. But I think with one person on, a top speed of 25 knots, it is about bang on the money. Um, which is more than you would ever need. Um, I have to be careful around here anyway, the sandbanks obviously, sometimes you're in rough water. Um, and my friend who has the same model of boat, with the exact same engine has given me that figure of 25 knots so I know that's fairly accurate so yeah that's certainly numbers that I've never had owning a boat before so that's good well yeah that's uh, that's what, what I know about the top speed I'll just give you an example of that now because it's an excuse to do so Hope the tripod doesn't fall over.
At this point I'll pop in some clips of the boat at full speed, as you don't really get a sense of it from inside the boat. The engine I use to get this performance is a 30 horsepower Honda 4 stroke. Although the hull's rated maximum is a 25, they really do pair well with a 30, and I think a lot of people run them with this outboard. I also think that any less than a 20 horsepower would be limiting the capabilities of this boat. With regards to manoeuvrability, I was very impressed at how little slip, which I think is the term for essentially what is understeer, that the hull gives, and this clip shows a circumference of a sensible turning circle at full throttle. While at anchor, the Weimar offers impressive stability, and the spacious deck means the boat doesn't feel too cluttered with two people, plus multiple rods, bags and bait etc. that's associated with most boat trips. The cushions on this boat make fishing at anchor comfy and the freeboard is around thigh height for safety. I make ass nets, pots or lines from this boat but if you don't do any of that you have the option to fit handrails for added safety. Okay so cons, after this video that I've been you know singing the, the praises of this boat I thought I'd probably better go through some, uh, some downsides of the boat because obviously as boat reviews go this is extremely biased, I've already chosen to, to buy this boat. So, things I don't like, um, the hull is, can be very slammy, it, it can slam a lot at certain frequencies of waves. That is just as a result of it being a plane in hull, it's a relatively flat bottom, it's not a deep V that cuts through the water, it does land on top as opposed to cut it. Just something I'm not used to, I'm, you know, that's not, oops, that's no detriment to the boat, it's just something I'm, I'm going to have to come to terms with. Uh, secondly is at anchor. We're at anchor right now and it is fairly sloppy. Um, they are very stable boats and the actual movement of the boat is, is pretty decent. It's just, it, you may well be able to hear the hull noise is very loud, just slightly louder than I'm used to but that's again something or nothing. And lastly is the centre console position. Good that it's to starboard rather than port, I prefer that. Um, however what I don't like as I may have mentioned earlier, is the boat does list to starboard when uh, someone like me is sitting at the wheel. It, it does tend to tip the boat a little bit, maybe I just need to lose a few pounds. But um, no, it just does sort of off centre the boat a bit, So, but I can steer standing up in the centre. So again, not too much of an issue. Those are really the only things I can find to pick faults up with this boat. So. Yeah, the conclusion of this review is that it's awesome, <laughs> as I'm, I'm sure I will have said previously uh, throughout the video, but yeah, thanks very much, and uh, make sure you buy a Weimar if you're looking to buy a new boat. They don't come up very often, but when they do, sorry the boat's rocking a lot, when they do, it's worth getting yourself one. Realistically, the recovery of this boat is as easy as launching, and again, is a one-man job. That hinged roller coaster trailer really helps turn the boat to the correct orientation as the winch line tightens, even if the current or wind is trying to pull the stern around. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it's slightly different. Thank you very much for watching, and feel free to pop any questions in the comments.